Welcome here. Today we're going to take a look at our great white. And as you can see by the size of the container, I already believe in this stuff and I already like it. Uh, I've seen some results, but for the rest of you and for uh, myself to see which way of using this stuff is the best, I've gone through and uh, devised three different tests. So we're going to take a look at uh, how those turned out and uh, what you can do to make the most out of this very expensive brown candy-like smell and stuff. Uh, if it's your first time here and you want to see more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe. Thumbs it up if you like the video. If not, give me a comment. Tell me what I could have done better for next time. To start out, I took the uh, paper towel method and uh, germinated a bunch of daikon radish seeds, as you can see here. Now, uh, these I think it was two days to germinate these things, and if you want to see the fastest way to germinate these things, I will leave the link up above. To start out with, I took perlite cups and filled them all up uh, just about to the top and took a daikon radish seed, cut it out of the paper towel and popped it on top. For one of the batches, I took them and just covered them right up with perlite to the top. And that'll be our test, one of our tests. Uh, for the other part of a test, I'm going to take and use my little paintbrush here, give it a little dip of some great white powder, and just inoculate those seedlings by just dabbing uh, a little bit of great white powder right on top of them, as you can see I'm doing right here. Now it doesn't take much, just a little dab. That's actually supposed to be a flux brush for uh, soldering. And just a little bit of dab of dust on the top, and we'll call that good. Batch number three, I'm going to take, and uh, I'm going to take a spoonful, actually a spoon this size, I have no idea what measurement unit this is. This seems really tiny, it's, it's probably like a sixteenth of a teaspoon. And mix that up in a half a gallon of solution. So all of the uh, tests will run with exactly the same nutrient solution, there's no variation there. The lighting will swap between my LED light setup with the positioning changing every day so that nothing is getting more light, less light, cold spots, hot spots. I'm trying to do as much here as I can to make this test as neutral as possible. As you can see, uh, next up here, day number one, all of the plants are now underneath the LED grow light inside of trays and they're kept separate. By day number three, everything is up. And everything is looking pretty much uniform at this point in time, A, B, and C there as well. Once we get to day number seven, this is when we can start seeing a little bit of difference between them already. And it might be tough to see from the top, so I'll flip over to a side angle. There's our C. Better there, so you know I'm not swapping anything around. Go over to our B tray, and then last off to the A tray. And from here, right now, I would say the B's are all consistently a little bit taller, and you can kind of see some of the leaves are starting on the C and the B's. A secondary set. Off to the next day here, day eight. Again, uh, everything is pretty much the same as it was yesterday. No huge changes. You can look from the side again. Now we can see secondary leaves popping up pretty good on tray C. Some of them are getting much bigger already. And B. See the secondary leaves popping out here as well. On actually, it looks like everything. And over to tray A. Try to hold this camera less like a drunk person. There we go. And the secondary leaves have started there. Day number 11. Here you can see they're a little bit out of sequence, but the trays are labeled for you guys that are keeping track. And at that point in time. 
it really looks to me like B is kind of jumping ahead right now of A and C. Although, yeah, C looks actually pretty close too. Now the reason for the jump of day 33, I do work away uh, for a few weeks at a time away from home. So uh, there's quite a gap in between the videos, but the consistency of how the watering has been done has been kept up by my wife. You can see all the roots and all the plants. Tray A. And all the perlite you can see here is totally just enwrapped with roots and some are coming out the bottom off to B kind of a broad overview of the tray and you can kind of see that there's some yellow leaves and this is kind of consistent on all of them and I think it's just because they're really outgrown the container on every one of those specimens that we've got here B has a little bit more hardy roots going all the way to the bottom and you can kind of see more of the roots started to poke through the holes on the bottom in the B set as well here. They look a little bit more uh, nested full on the bottoms. Tray C, again a root, uh, sorry, a, an overview of the plants. Again more yellowing is going on. Pretty consistent on all of them actually. Uh, the root structure in these looks really good. I think overall this one probably the C tree had the biggest root balls of any of them. You can really see it's a, they're tangled up and uh, much thicker on the outsides even and a little bit higher up. What I did now is I took all the roots and perlite and stripped it off down to just the root crop or the piece that you'd actually end up eating and uh, laid them out flat so you can kind of see the different trays. There was A. Take a quick look over at the B tray as well. Kind of about the same, maybe a little bit bigger. Tough to say side by side like this. And off to the C tray again with the roots stripped off and just the root crop left on the edible portion. And to me, already at this point in time, uh, as I was doing this, there was already pretty clear cut winter, but there's uh, definitely a point I want to mention later on in the video of uh, something I learned that surprised me a bit. Top-down overview of all three might be a little bit easier to see uh, which you guys think are the clear windows winners here. And make sure you leave your feedback down in the uh, description. I'm very curious about uh, any ideas on further experimentation of the Great White. I want to make the uh, most use of this stuff as I can. I flip the trays around a little bit just doing comparisons to kind of see side by sides. And with the A next to the C, you can really see the difference between A and C. And we'll flip another one around here. We'll put the B in the C. At this point in time, this is kind of what I was thinking. It was between B and C. I was doing my uh, comparison here when I was pulling these trays around. It's only when I ended up taking the best two of all of them and putting them side by side, the A, the B, and the C, and now there's a pretty clear cut winner for me. I could have taken the top three or top four and put them side by side like I laid them here and it's the results are pretty consistent. C has a thicker uh, root on every one of them versus the B and C, although B is close, but A uh, has definitely fallen way behind the other two. So what do you guys think the winners are? Let me know down below. 
or what did you guys pick as a winner? Now here's a picture of another daikon radish that's in a Dutch bucket grow that I've got going on. And the reason I show this thing is they're started very much at the same time and it just kind of shows you how outsized of that container those already are. So that's why I put that thing in there just to let you know why the leaves are yellowing. They're just strapped for space. Those are tiny little cups and the experiment went a little longer than what I had initially intended. All right, so the moment you're waiting for, here's the answers. The A tray, it is a neutral tray. There is nothing, that's my control. That is quite simply just nutrient solution. The B tray, got the little dusting of great white on the seedlings. And then it got the same nutrient solution as A. C on the other hand, that got the great white and that little teaspoonful for every half a gallon mixed in and that was its consistent watering solution. The solution or the nutrient balance in the solution was the same across and the only variable I could think of there was the great white swapping the trays as we mentioned earlier. I'm pretty happy but I did learn uh, a lesson here then uh, this is what I was going to share with you guys. The little bit of a dusting that I gave the bee tray, you can see it if you look back on the earlier part of the video. The bee had a slight little bump before C caught up to it and then finally C ended up passing it. But I'm thinking that's the way to go. Give them a little bit of a dusting when you initially plant and then maybe once a week or something like that introduce a little bit of great white just to kind of keep it going with the nutrient solution. That seems to be really, really good. If there's another test that I'm missing or a better way of doing this that you guys have come up with, I'd love to hear from you. Uh, if it's your first time here and you want to see more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe. Thumbs it up if you like the video. If not, give me a comment. Tell me what I could have done better for next time. Till then, we'll see you again.